Righto, tell you there, champs. Hope you're all doing well out there. Now, been asked many times on Twitter and emails, when's the next SPS 15 coming out? Should I buy the old one? Should I wait for the new one? Well, we're going to discuss that and not just the XPS 15. And I can tell you, I'm going to dig into the performance and I'm going to be very accurate with these performance figures here. And I also want to just talk about the next generation laptops as well, like when they're coming out and the performance of those as well. I'm also getting asked quite a lot where I can buy those cheap Windows Pro upgrade keys and Office 2019. Check out my description. I have a link and a discount code for you. Now, if you guys are new around here, come on, sub up, join the Wood Train, hit that bell, the notification, say all notifications so you don't miss one of my videos because I'm going to get this new XPS 15 and review it like nobody else. Trust me on that. Check out my previous videos. You should already know that. Thumbs up if you agree. Now the XPS 15 was supposed to be released early April. I think we know what's happening. Toyota Corolla, yes, the C word. I'm not going to say it. And this is industry wide. So when can we expect it now? I think you're going to see some announcements early April for new laptops, next generation laptops. And that includes the XPS 15. And because everything's been pushed back, I think you're going to see performance figures of the next generation laptops sometime in April most likely mid-April. Now you don't have to wait until then to find out what the performance of these new generation laptops are, whether it's the Intel 10th generation, you know, content creation gaming laptops or the AMD Ryzen 4000 powered laptops. Just go to Rogue Game on Twitter. You can see all of these laptops benchmarks. The performance figures are already out there. So check out Rogue Game on Twitter. And yeah, so that's where we get the performance metrics, which I'll talk about in a minute. That's where we're getting them from. We already know. And we also know the models of of the CPUs because all this information is already publicly out there and I'll leave links in the description to Rogaine and where I'm getting some of this information from. Now it does look like Ryzen is going to be the king especially that 35 watt 4900 whoa that thing looks serious which Zeus have like a, an exclusive for what is it six months or something but even the 4800 is going to be a beast AMD we're talking about. Now the XPS 15 and most gaming laptops are not going to have this. They're going to have the Intel part. And you might be thinking why not go Ryzen if it's the performance king? Well there's a lot of things. Thunderbolt 3 how's it going to work? Supposedly coming but until we see it working properly on an AMD system well we'll wait to see. Also, it's a brand new platform, this AMD platform. And if you've had any experience with new platforms, new laptops, new even desktops and stuff like that, you know they never get it right the first time. So I do expect there's going to be more issues with the Ryzen sort of laptops rather than the known Intel laptops that, you know, these things have been around since Skylake. These 10th generation processors are just basically Skylake CPUs and the chipset's been around forever. So... There's that. Also, Intel are not going to take this line down. Intel are going to be offering vendors very aggressive rebates to use Intel products and stick with them. And there's one more thing, Rocket Lake. I'm going to make a video on this. Rocket Lake changes everything, and that should be the next CPU you're going to get. Probably next year. It's going to be 14 nanometer, but don't laugh at it because it's going to be game changing. I will make a video about that. Subscribe to see that. And hit that bell. ding a ling a dong Come on, sub up. So the long and short of it, XPS 15, expect to hear something in April about it. Hopefully we stand in the Toyota Corolla and that goes with, you know, other next generation laptops as well. With performance, we know the parts in there. There's plenty of benchmarks, as I've said. There are four CPUs that are probably going to go on this XPS 15, or more likely three. You'll probably get an i5, i7, and i9, even though they're supposedly three i7s. The backbone of the XPS 15 will be the i7 10750H. That's a six core CPU and according to the leaks it can boost up to five gigahertz which on the ninth gen you had to have the i9 to do that. So not an increase in cores. There is also an i7 that has eight cores. So there's the i7 10875H that has eight cores and it can turbo boost up to 5.1. The XPS I don't think will use that. They'll use the i7 10750H and then the i9 Big Daddy. They'll use the 10980HK, which is eight cores, same base, 2.4 gigahertz, but can boost to 5.3 gigahertz with thermal velocity. The current i9, I've seen it go up to 4.9 single thread. Of course, this is single threaded, these boost clocks. But if that can go up to 5.3, you can imagine it could probably do 5 gigahertz easily with sort of single threaded applications. 
Now, if you check out the performance figures of this CPU, you can see Rogaine, it's about a 10% lift in performance when it comes to CPU. So that's what you'd expect. Now, is the XPS 15 a new design with new thermals? Let's hope so. There's no guarantee of that. But if it is, you can expect more than 10% performance upgrade because you're getting a 10% just going from 9th to 10th generation. Then you're going to get better thermals. So you might get another 10% from that. And then when you get 20%, that makes it worth it, right? But if they're just upgrading the CPU and the current chassis do nothing with cooling, you can expect more maybe a 10% uplift in the CPU. Now what we're hoping for with the XPS 15 is an all new design. It's not gonna be 16 by 10 display. I think it's gonna be using the same OLED panel, the same like LED 4K touch, hopefully some thermal improvements. If, if you wanna know what the design will look like, if it's a new design, sort of like the XPS 13, although it won't have the 16 by 10 sort of you know, footprint. And this could mean we get different sort of port arrangements as well. Hopefully two M.2 drives in there as well. Now with the GPU, we know, again, go to Rogaine. You can see plenty of benchmarks of the RTX Super. We know they're RTX Super. There's there's lots of public information out there about it. That again is going to be a 10% lift and basically the GPUs are going to be moving up in a stack. So for example, an RTX 2070 Super will be as fast as the old RTX 2080. So it moves up in a stack. So the only GPU that's going to be really faster is the RTX 2080 Super. The others are just moving up in the stack. Now when it comes to the XPS 15, hopefully we're not getting the same GTX 1650. Hopefully we're getting a six gigabyte GDDDR6 1650 Super. I don't think we're gonna get 1660 or 1660 Ti, not in a the thermal package of 130 watts. It's just, that's not happening. I really wish Nvidia would move to seven nanometer so we can use less power. But yeah, they've been a bit greedy, aren't they, Nvidia this way? Come on, we're paying enough for it. But anyway, if it does go to GTX 1650, it should be a good performance uplift. As I've said, there's plenty of benchmarks around. You're getting around the 10% with the new RTX graphics card. So I guess the question, should you wait for the new one or should you buy the old one? If you can get the current model now on a deal, get it. It's a great machine. It's not made for gaming. I've told you that a million times. But you can game. I game all the time on my XPS 15. Well, I did. But it's great for content creation because you're not hammering the CPU and GPU at once when you're doing that sort of stuff. So it is a great machine, the one you can get now, the XPS 15. Have no qualms about still recommending that and buying it, especially if you get it on a deal. I think you have to get it on a deal now just because the new one's coming out. Although, when are these likely to be available, this next generation? I think we're going to hear about performance midway in April, but I don't think they're going to be in people's hands like easily available until May. I don't know. I'm not going to hold my breath with that. But I would say now we're just in that zone. You just might as well wait to see what happens. That doesn't mean you're not going to buy the current version now. You just wait to see what the next version is. And if it is a new design, it's got new thermals, well, wait for the benchmarks, wait for, you know, my review other people's reviews, then you can make an informed decision. Now, if it does come out with just a spec upgrade, the same chassis, I mean, it's almost instantly just buy the current one. Because, you know, 10% on the CPU, maybe 10% on the GPU, thermals permitting, same thermals. Well, if it is a six gigabyte video card, that may make a difference if you're doing more than 4K. The current XPS 15, I've edited so many 4K videos on that, it's not funny. Most of my videos have been done with that laptop. We know the parts, we know the performance metrics of that 10% uplift with the new parts. From what I've seen of Rocket Lake, I'm thinking AMD may have the little advantage now, but Rocket Lake is gonna be a big deal next year. And then we're gonna have mini LED, yeah. It could be, apart from the AMD stuff, which is new and yeah, we wanna see where they sit. It could just be an iterative year. So anyway, within April, we're gonna find out everything. Sub up, I'm gonna get that XPS 15 straight away. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Tally ho. Mm -hmm.